Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I am making a Halloween themed card using basically non-Halloween supplies today. So I'm using the Honey Bee Stamps little pickup stamp set that I finally got my hands on, and I'm going to be stamping it onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock with Versamark ink, and I used my anti-static powder tool first, and I also stamped the little cluster of pumpkins image from this set onto the Bristol Smooth with the Versamark. And then I'm using some detail black embossing powder. Now I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not the biggest fan of black embossing powder, especially on white cardstock, because it tends to just get everywhere and leave a black residue and everything like that. But I wanted the shiny black raised image for this truck and the pumpkins. I just, I thought it would look really nice. Hence me using the anti-static powder tool first. That really helped with this. So I didn't have any black residue. You could stamp with a black pigment ink and embossing clear, but you don't get quite the same results. I really like how black embossing powder looks because it's just, it's very black and raised and shiny. And it just, it really gives it that extra finishing touch. You could also just stamp this in black, but then you have to um, be a little more careful when you're watercoloring. I wanted the embossing because it enables me to quickly watercolor this image and I don't have to worry about any areas like bleeding into each other because the embossing powder kind of creates little wells almost, you know, to hold everything into place. So the watercoloring is super simple. I'm just using some distress inks and I'm just mushing them onto the block that I had put the stamp onto. So I'm just mushing my little distress inks onto that and then picking up the color with a water brush and then painting it into place. So I only ended up using four altogether. I used um, peacock feathers and hickory smoke for the truck and then for the pumpkins I used carved pumpkin obviously and gathered twigs distress inks and then um, let those dry and then I'm going to use the coordinating dies from the Honeycut die sets for this and tape those into place with some micropore tape before running this through my Big Shot machine. So I die cut these two images and then I also die cut some more Bristol Smooth cardstock with the largest of the Honey Bee A2 double stitched frames um, Honeycut dies. Once I had that die cut, I took some post-it tape and I just cut it in half because I just wanted to mask off the stitching area to give it a nice little white border. So it kind of looks like there's an extra layer when there really isn't. So I lined up the straight edge of the post-it tape around all four edges of this die cut here. And then I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks for the blending. I could have used Distress inks if I had wanted, but I really love the Distress Oxide inks. And they're just, they're so much fun for blending and sponging and all that kind of stuff. And they just give a slightly different finished look than Distress inks. But either one would work for something like this. So I started with fossilized amber at the bottom and then into that I blended picked raspberry. Just letting the colors like transition into each other. I started the color off like on the mini ink blending tool on the post-it tape first. However, another nice perk of the Distress Oxides is it's a lot easier. You have a little bit more time to blend out any marks if you end up getting, you know, streaks or anything like that. So I went from pick ras picked raspberry to wilted violet and then black soot at the top. And I ended up pl pulling the black soot all the way down to the bottom, just a little bit here and there. I just kind of wanted to deepen it up a little bit and just give it that look since this is Halloween card. So once that was done, I'm going to spray this with my distress sprayer at liberally. Because <laughs> that's always the funnest part. And then I let it sit for maybe 30 seconds and then pick that up with paper towels. You get this fun splatter effect. And of course I needed to add some white splatter to kind of like, I'm thinking night sky with this. So I used my Copic opaque white, thinned it out with water, and then I'm just flicking it against a paintbrush here, flicking it with a paintbrush against the edge of the acrylic block to create a splatter. So splatter that liberally all over this, concentrating most of the splatter towards the top where the sky is, you know, black and darkest. And then I'm going to let that dry. And then I had some space left on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. So I die cut the word happy from the happy Honeycuts dies and left that into place in the scrap cardstock because that held that in place so I could sponge that same peacock feathers distressing onto it. Rather than trying to find cardstock in my stash that would match the truck, I was like, why not just sponge the color? That makes more sense. So I used the peacock feathers on the bottom portion of the sentiment and I used the hickory smoke a little bit on the top just to, you know, pull in a little bit of that gray. And then I die cut the sentiment two more times from black cardstock and I'm going to stack all these together with my Tonic Nouveau adhesive. 
So I've got a fine tip applicator on this bottle. I have a second bottle that I just kept like as it comes when you order it and that I use for the bulk of my um, adhesive and whatnot. But this fine tip applicator that I use, I've shown it in other videos. I use it on my multimedia mat and my glossy accents and everything else. Um, I like it on this for like more detailed areas. It's kind of not necessary with this particular sentiment because it's a large enough sentiment. You can just use um, the Nouveau adhesive as is. But it was sitting right in front of me, so I grabbed it. So I adhered all this together, and then my sentiment I wanted to make was Happy Halloween, and I went through all of my stamps that I have so far from Honeybee. Didn't have a single Halloween word. So what I ended up doing was taking the Happiness stamp set, and I took two different stamps, and I am cutting them apart. It does not hurt the stamps. I make sure when I cut to, I try to do as straight of cuts as possible, especially when I'm literally cutting apart just letters. So I can still use the stamps as they're intended. I can just butt the letters back up against each other and it will stamp fine. But I wanted to cut out enough letters to spell the word Halloween. So that's what I did. So I put all the remaining little pieces back on the backing sheet so that I don't lose them because these are just tiny little letters here. And this particular set and a lot of the honeybee sets, just the way they look a little more handwritten. Um, I find you can get away with things like this. So if you want to, you know, customize a name or any sort of word, you can totally do this. If you really didn't want to cut apart your stamps, you could do the, um, you know, you could tape off the stamps and stamp each letter one at a time. It would take forever. That's why I didn't do it. And I just cut my stamps up because I would get more use out of them cut up than I would sitting. I would just wouldn't bother to sit and tape off and mask and all that kind of stuff. So I lined up all those letters onto an acrylic block and I had space left on this black piece of cardstock that I had die cut the word happy from. So it still had a straight edge. So I just used my anti-static powder tool and I'm going to stamp the word Halloween with the Versamike, Versamark ink. And then I'm going to emboss that with some white embossing powder. So I'm going to pour over the white embossing powder onto that stamp and then I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. And once that is completely melted, I can then um, line this up in my paper trimmer and trim off the excess cardstock. So I'm going to get that lined off or trimmed off and then I'm going to use just my fingers to wipe away all that excess anti-static powder because on black cardstock it really shows up whereas when I used it on the white in the beginning you can't really see it at all. But same thing you just want to wipe it off with your fingers a Swiffer cloth would work as well. And now I want to figure out how I'm going to you know line up my sentiment and everything. So I'm going to trim off the one end of the Halloween sentiment with my scissors and then I'm going to adhere the happy with same thing, the Nouveau adhesive. So just applying a thin amount to the thickest areas of the sentiment, the whole thing doesn't need to be covered because this is a really strong glue. So I just apply a thin amount, thin enough that it's not really going to ooze out around the edges because you don't want um, to see it at all. And I'm going to press that into place and then I added just little dabs of it to where I'm going to adhere this little banner that says Happy Halloween. And then I realized I need to straighten out that stitched rectangle to make sure that was straight so that the sentiment banner was straight because it wasn't. So I had a couple seconds left to quickly adjust that before the glue dried. And then I can just flip this over and use my scissors to cut off the part of the banner that's hanging over the edge of the card. So once I have that, I'm going to adhere the truck and the pumpkins using foam tape. Just pop those up and then press those into place. And of course I wanted to add an embellishment but still keeping it fairly simple. So I pulled out the Pirate Black Half Pearls from Honeybee. And there's four, yeah I think four sizes in this little pack which is great. So I just picked out a few of them and kind of sprinkled them onto my card front. I'm just going to pick those up with my Crystal Katana and use that same Nouveau adhesive. Just little dabs of that and then press those pearls into place. And that's going to finish off my card front. So for the inside of my card I have another... Um, stitched rectangle from the white cardstock and this time I'm just going to ink up the truck with that peacock feathers distress ink stamp that onto the bottom of this little panel here and then I'm going to ink up that pumpkin stamp with the carved pumpkin distress ink and then stamp that as well and just keep it like that and then I've got all the other space to write to the recipient so I did this because I'm going to do my cardstock or my card base out of black cardstock which I don't mind doing because then you can just use, you can either emboss a sentiment on the inside or you can, and then you can stamp or write with a gel pen, you know, that would show up. But a lot of times I just find it's easier to line the inside of the card with lighter colored cardstock. That way it's just easier to, you know, have a sentiment or an image or anything like that. So my cardstock, like I said, is black cardstock with, that I had cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So it's a top folding A2 size card. 
So I adhered the stitched panel to the inside and then the outside panel I adhered with foam tape just to give it some more dimension. And that finished off my card for today. So as always, I will have a link below the video to the blog post with links to all the supplies used. So you can check that out below the video if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're watching on the blog post, there'll be links and info below the video in the blog post you're watching it from. So check that out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.